Hello, uh, my fellow comic book collectors. This is going to be a pretty cool unboxing. Uh, I got a really big box <laughs> in behind me. This one and a little one. So uh, this is my comic shop, a uh, bunch of books. And there's some really great books that um, almost helped me complete a collection that I've been working on for 40 years. <laughs> so I'll get into that in a minute. But first I'll do this little one. I have no idea what this one is. It's coming from England, so it should be something good. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, this should be a pretty good unboxing, actually. Uh, there's some really good Golden Age stuff in the other box. Okay, so this one, a bit of a challenge to open. It's got lots of tape on it. <laughs> so, uh, I tried to actually prepare it a little bit so it wouldn't be such a big... Oh, wow. Okay, this is <laughs> this is actually as major as the books that are in there. Okay, so this one's a really major book. Um, and so we start off with just a big mega key. Uh, this is one that's a little bit under the radar for most people. I, people don't realize the significance of this book, but it is uh, definitely a major grail. Uh, and it's sort of like a, a Copper Age Grail. So in my mind, the, the big Copper Age books would be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, uh, Primer 2, uh, Albedo, uh, The Crow. Those are kind of like the pinnacle, like those big, big uh, characters that were kind of out of that bronze or Copper Age, I should say, Copper Age. But there was another character, a female character, that was another big kind of um, character that kind of defined that era. <laughs> and that character was Tank Girl. Uh, and this is where she made her first appearance. This is a Deadline magazine, uh, number one. And it's the first appearance and first cover appearance of Tank Girl. Now, there is um, talk that um, they're going to, like, they already made a feature film with Tank Girl. Uh, it didn't do that well. It wasn't very successful at all. But uh, there's talk that Mar uh, Margot, uh, Mar Margot Ruby, uh, the girl that played uh, Harley Quinn, uh, wants to uh, bring back <laughs> Tank Girl and do, uh, you know, stop playing Harley Quinn and do a little bit of Tank Girl stuff. So I'm not sure if there's much behind that rumor if that's uh if that's you know if there's anything in the works but we could see a, a tank girl movie in the future and as a result this book has always been kind of a pricey one because it is kind of a scarce book it is really rare um you know you're you're if you get a graded copy you're looking at a couple thousand dollars easily um and uh you know so it's 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 a rare one that i've actually been searching for for a long long time uh i was a, i actually liked uh, tank girl back in the 90s uh when you know when her first series came out um and uh you know i was i was always trying to collect those those comics and only a few years back got her number one issue of that which was her first comic appearance but this one is a major key just a really big book <laughs> this is such a big book uh so hard to find and uh they didn't ship it the best in terms of the actual like the shipping is fine but the fact that it's in this kind of weird little bag is a little strange i'm gonna actually have to switch out the bagging for it but um other than that it is it's quite presentable i would say it's like a, a five or a six oh it would be my guess in terms of the grading so not too bad okay so that's the first one that was actually pretty big i didn't realize it was coming today um and now let's get into this my comic shop one. Oh no my dreaded nemesis is here oh my goodness what my comic shop don't do this to me i hate these things oh and they're like bigger than normal Ugh. bigger and scarier more nemesis than before so um i'm gonna put put that right there and i'm gonna try to pull out some stuff they always, I have to give it to my comic shop. They always ship things really well. So you'll see there's a bunch of books and a slab. That's one slab.
and three more slabs to go. <laughs> okay, so there was a bunch. Um, they always pack things really, really well. I have to always give them high marks for their packing. So I'm going to do the raws first. And... I'm just going to get this out of the plastic. So they always like individually bag and board all their comics. And uh, my comic shop is like probably one of the, I, I would say it's the best store uh, online for buying comics, personally. Um, and because they, they always do such a great job of bagging and boarding all the books. And um, they do... Uh, they not only do that, but they they do another bag around the bag, you know, so it's doubly bagged and then they do a pretty good job of then putting cardboard on either side. So these are kind of the things you do to kind of protect comics. So they always do such a great job. Okay, with all that being said, let's get into some of these comics. These are awesome. <laughs> these are, okay, so some of them are ones that I already had. Um, and I just, when I saw the price, I was like, oh, I might as well get another copy <laughs> because I love this book. And the first one is this one. I think I paid $3. Uh, this is Vampirella, Vengeance of Vampirella number one, the red foil. And it is just, and the thing that's really cool about it, and I didn't even know this, <laughs> it is signed. It's a signed copy. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. Wow. <laughs> It's signed too. That is a bonus that I didn't know. So when you get there, <laughs> it's just so great. I'm not even sure if they knew that. It's a signed copy. That's really cool. So now I have two copies of it. One is signed and one is not signed. And I might even get that slabbed because it's it's uh it's signed by uh I think it's signed by let me see. Let me see the name. Let's see if we can figure it out. Um, I'm going to guess it's by the, the writer, maybe. I'm not sure. If you can figure out, can you see that signature? Wow, that is just too cool. Okay, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who the signature is. It's, you know, people's signatures, it's almost impossible to read. Like, even my own signature, I can't read my own signature. Okay. <laughs> um, another series that I was kind of looking into, I just thought it had really great covers. And I forget, I think somebody actually had it on their channel, like where they were talking about it. And I just thought it was just really sexy covers. Um, is a series called Knockout. And I'm not really familiar with it, but I like the covers. <laughs> so I thought this was kind of a kind of a cool cover. She's just sort of sitting on the guy. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool. And then we got... Um, one that is really cool. Um, so I'm collecting homage covers to Crime Suspense Stories 22. I, I'm just, I, I pretty much buy any time that I see a homage cover, I get it. I go out and buy it. So somebody actually knew this about me and said, hey, Alan, you know, there's a there's a homage cover <laughs> that you might not have. And this is it. A cult classic. Uh, and it's just it's just an homage cover. It's I think it's kind of cool. Let me see if I can show it a little bit better. My fingers are in the way. So, just a really cool homage. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, so <laughs> so another homage cover. I, have, I think I have over almost 10 different homage covers to Crime Suspense Stories. So I think that's kind of cool. Okay, and another series. Oh, sorry, actually. So I'm going to show you some more knockouts. Because it's all mixed up. It's like I kind of try to organize it a little bit as I'm talking. Uh, here's another knockout. You can see that it's really great covers. I believe, um, I forgot who did the covers. I want to say, um, no, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say Adam Hughes or somebody like that, but I'm not sure. It's really great covers, though. Whoever did the covers, I think it is Adam Hughes. Kind of has that look to it. Ah. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Oh, uh, Cheeto. Cheeto did. Cheeto. Yeah, Cheeto. Or Cheeto. <laughs> Cheeto did the covers. So I, I've seen him do other covers and his stuff is good. Um, then we got 
just a really great Vampirella cover. I just saw, like, sometimes I just buy random covers that I like. Uh, this is Vampirella number one from the fifth series. <laughs> I just thought it was a great cover. And I was buying a bunch of Vampirellas. I was kind of getting nostalgic for uh, Vampirellas. And so I picked up ones that I just didn't have. Uh, this is like um, Vampirella, again, a fifth, uh, third, second series, number one. I thought that was kind of cool. It's a wraparound cover. And I saw this on somebody else's channel. They, um, I did this video on romance covers. And uh, somebody basically responded to my, uh, you know, Friday's challenge where I talked about romance covers. And um, I want to, I think it's either Viking, um, Pope Viking or one of those guys. Um did this, uh, showed this video, I showed this in his video, and I thought it was such a great cover. I was like, oh, I gotta get that one. <laughs> it's just such a great cover. It is Flash Annual 10, I believe. Yeah, Flash Annual number 10. Just a really great, almost reminds me of like, um, like 40s cinema poster or something like that, or, you know, kind of has that 40s kind of, you know, this very classic cover, just very nice cover. Okay, um, another weird, quirky thing that I collect, <laughs> I collect so many weird things, um, is um, Super Pets. <laughs> I love the quirkiness and weirdness of Super Pets. And um, one of the characters in Super Pets, I believe, uh, is Wonder Woman's pet. And her pet is, um, uh, it's a special creature called a Kanga. <laughs> and... Um, her the pet's name is Jumpa. Well, Jumpa kind of appeared in the kind of animated like version, and it made its first appearance in this one, uh, Superman Family Adventures number twelve. This is the first appearance of Jumpa <laughs> in uh, this animated style. I know it's kind of a weird, <laughs> very weird first appearance. Not one that anyone should spec on. <laughs> it's probably going to be worthless, but. It's quirky and I like it. So, and another quirky thing that I just thought was a really great cover. Uh, I just liked the cover. I, I thought it was just kind of nice. Good girl art cover. Uh, this is X-Men uh, Unlimited number 36. And what do you think? Uh, do you like these like um, just random kind of good girl art covers? I do. I, I just really like them. So I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm trying to get it so that it doesn't have the glare but i just really like it i think that's um magic and her dragon and, and uh, you know the guy in the background so just a really cool cool cover and another just <laughs> cover by like so many cover buys here uh is uh this just vampirella kind of in prison kind of cover i just thought it was a really great cover and uh just a yeah really like that cover okay uh, somebody told me about this one, and I thought, hey, this is a great cover. Um, this is Comet Man number four. And if you were the one that told me to get this one, comment below. <laughs> I picked it up, it was like $2. So I thought, hey, for a great, it's a great price, can't really argue. And I think I even got 10% off on it, so it was like $1.80. You know? <laughs> it's like so affordable. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a She-Hulk in a towel on the cover. So, kind of a sexy She-Hulk cover. And then I got this one. I, I think this one is totally under the radar, and it is a good spec. This is one that maybe today isn't that valuable, but I can see this one being like a few hundred dollars in the future. Easily. Easily. Uh, this is Adventure Time number one. Now, this is not the, the, the regular version. This is the comic, uh, Annapolis Comic Con exclusive, um, which is actually rarer. <laughs> so, um, you know, it came out at the exact same time. So it's not like this is not the first appearance. It's the first appearance of all the Adventure Time characters. And it is um, also um, something that I think there will be a nostalgia for many years from now. Like, that's what ends up happening. The people that watched Adventure Time when it came out, 
you know, when they get old enough where they were like, hey, I'd love to see, you know, I'd love to own, you know, a bit of my childhood. Well, this comic, I think, will be that um, because it was such a popular series. And I think, you know, I remember watching it with my kids when they were younger. <laughs> so uh, Adventure Time, I think, has some potential to it. Long term spec. Okay, I'm trying to get to the, you know, where it's just the one series because there's this one run of comics. I'm just trying to get it so that they're just by themselves. Okay, uh, then we get, and this is just again another another cover by, uh, it's by J. Scott Campbell. It's just a great cover. Um, actually, this is a pretty pricey book. I, I think I think I paid twelve dollars for it, which sounds like not that much. But I saw it on eBay for thirty to fifty dollars. <laughs> I was kind of surprised. So, but it's just a really nice cover with Vampirella, very J. Scott Campbell style. Um, but yeah, I really like his artwork. So um, I figured, hey, why not? That's just a really great cover. Um, another one that is kind of interesting and a bit of a nostalgia. <laughs> this is a different generation, um, more my generation actually. Um, this is. Um, the Coneheads. This is Coneheads number one. This is the first appearance of the Conehead, uh, Code, Coneheads. Um, and the Coneheads were really interesting. They uh, they actually had a featured film, and but they were originally an SS, SNL sketch. sketch. And um, one of the character, one of the actors that played uh, Cone, uh, Coneheads uh, was Dan Aykroyd. So um, kind of cool. Um, and uh, yeah, just a really great uh, little bit of my childhood nostalgia. So, um, and it was cheap. It was like five to eight dollars, I believe. So yeah, something like that. Okay, now we're getting into the last of the raw comics. And it's just a bunch. They're all from the same series. And I think I was, I was trying to organize them as I was talking. So that, and I failed. I almost had it. Okay, so now they're organized, <laughs> um, but it's just a uh, it's a uh, a series just called Trekker. Um, I believe this was William Shatner or somebody like that. Uh, but it's Ron Rendell. Um, you know, I think it was one of these one of these famous actors. I think they were trying to bring this series to uh, the screen. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah. So I could be wrong, totally wrong. So just don't take my quote for it. But uh, it's a cheap series to pick up. And I picked up the whole series. I think it was like, I think there's six in the total thing. I missed one issue, number five I missed. And it was 10 bucks for the whole set. So um, number one, number two. And I think they have great covers. So um, somebody was recommending this one to me. So I thought it was kind of a cool, cool little set. And it wasn't expensive, like 10 bucks. Can't go wrong for the whole set. So just really great covers. And last one. And it's like a very cool, cool set of comics. So that's something to check out later. <laughs> okay, now we're getting into the slabs. The slabs are pretty big. And let's see what it is. Oh, I started out with the biggest one. That's <laughs> kind of convenient. Okay, so I'm actually trying to get a run of Wonder Woman comics, uh, the first series. So the first series ran from um, 1942, I believe, uh, to um, like into the 70s, early 80s, almost 80s. Um, I think in that era, like, like 79, 80, somewhere around there. And it was 329 issues. <laughs> it was just a massive run. And um, I'm very close to getting the complete run of Wonder Woman. Very, very close. Like, I think I'm like under 20, maybe under 15. I think something like that. I think it's 13 issues that I'm missing. And um, to start off, I was trying to get uh, at least issues 1 through 10. <laughs> That's, you know, kind of a... Cool. Well, this is the last one I needed for that that run of one through ten. This is number four. It's in a low grade. It's a point five. So I think the reason is it's missing the centerfold. 
So uh, that was the issue. The, a lot of these Golden Age books, uh, especially during the war, uh, they didn't use very good staples. The staples didn't really penetrate far enough and the centerfolds would fall out. So you, there's a lot of Golden Age books that are 0.5 as a result where they look beautiful. And that's what I was really aiming for. <laughs> they actually present really well. If you look at it, it's a little dirty, I, I, I'd say. Um, but it presents reasonably well. Some issue going on up here, maybe. <laughs> but but for the most part, uh, the cover is quite quite good. I would say that it should be cleaned. I don't know why. Maybe because the it wasn't a complete book. They didn't decide to clean it. But they could have easily cleaned it. I think it could really pop if it was cleaned. It just looks like it should be cleaned. Um, so yeah. So um, this is just a kind of a cool uh, early book. I don't think there's anything that's a major key about it. But any of these early Wonder Woman books are really expensive. Even in a 0.5, <laughs> they can be quite expensive. So uh, now I have my run from 1 to 10. Um, and I'm only missing, as I said, like maybe, I think it's like 12 issues that I'm missing. Okay, so that's number 4, Wonder Woman number 4 from the Golden Age. And you're going to, there's going to be a bit of a theme going on here. I'm not sure if this is another one. Nope, this is not another, uh, but there is a bunch of Wonder Woman. <laughs> so a lot of these slabs are Wonder Woman, okay? Okay, but this one is just a great comic. Not Wonder Woman related, but is a great comic. Um, so I've been collecting, I, I think I showed, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but probably by the time you, I've shown this one in the past, Fighting Yank, and it's just like a great uh, Nazi cover. Well, I was picking up similar Schomburg um, sort of, World War II covers, and this one is with the Japanese. So this is Startling Comics number 34. <laughs> and it's just uh, another Alex Schomburg with Fighting Yank, and he's beating up the Japanese, and there's bondage going on with the American fighter. Uh, I think he's a tanker, actually. Um, and it's got the samurai swords, and like you can see the samurai swords, and you know, they're shooting at Fighting Yank and he's punching them in the face. <laughs> you know, it's like, and they have like the, you know, I'm not sure if you, you can see it, but they, they always would draw uh, the Japanese with these crazy buck teeth. And um, another thing that Schomburg would never shy away from is he always had his little, whenever he did this kind of bondage kind of cover, he would always have like, and kind of these war propaganda covers, he would always have these instruments of torture. <laughs> I just like you can see all the instruments of torture. I don't know why he always picks the hacksaw. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, and another thing that's great about it, it has the war bonds stamp on it. So um, just a really cool one. Uh, this is the origin and only appearance of the scarab. <laughs> so a little bonus there that it's a first appearance. And... Um, yeah, it's it's a low grade. It's from uh, 1945, but you know it's kind of cool. It's got a nice back cover as well. Um, so yeah, I, I I like it. I don't know. <laughs> I like these war propaganda covers. I think they're interesting. Um, and then we get into another Wonder Woman. So the last two are going to be both Wonder Woman. And this one, like, is a higher grade. Like, I, I, I don't always buy low grade. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not always cheap. Um, sometimes I get the higher grade to get that nice presenting copy. And this one is beautiful. <laughs> like, it is pretty stunning, actually. Uh, it's a seven O, and a seven O in uh, Golden Age is like a, a high grade, like a really high grade. Uh, this is a Wonder Woman number twenty five. Um, and it has a four-page feature of Dolly Madison, drawn by Paul Raymond. Raymond. It's just a really, uh, just a really great Golden Age cover. You got Wonder Woman just sort of doing her thing, looking at you know wanted pictures, and then you got the very people that she's searching for standing behind her, ready to stab her in the back. <laughs> so this is from 1947. And it's just a you know really great uh, golden age Wonder Woman cover, 
and you got the back where they're selling guns. <laughs> Can't, nothing more American than, you know, selling guns to kids. <laughs> I think that's so awesome. Uh, I think it's funny. Okay, so, yeah. Kind of a cool comic. So, uh, this is, you know, Wonder Woman 25. It's just one of those great Golden Age Wonder Woman. Okay, and the last one is another cool Wonder Woman. Let's see if I can pop it out. This one's taped a bit more than the other ones were. Okay, there we go. Okay, this one actually I thought was kind of an interesting one. Um, I'm not sure if you can really see it that well. Um, this is Wonder Woman 35, and this is the Nine Lives of Cub. Uh, club, the nine love, the nine lives club, uh, you know, and it's just like all these like cats, you know, cat people, and uh, and you got Wonder Woman kind of there in the middle. Um, just the early, uh, you know, Wonder Woman thirty five. These ones in the thirties are actually seem to be quite hard to come by. I don't know why I'm having more troubles finding the ones in the thirties. Um, but yeah, so um, this one I thought was quite good. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a medium grade, like a 3.0 is kind of what I would say for Golden Age is kind of like a medium, <laughs> like in the mi middle, middle range grades. Uh, and it's got a nice shoe on the back. So um, nothing says, you know, coolness, but as much as a shoe. <laughs> and this is Bulldozer's shoe. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I don't know. Uh, but this is from 1949. It's just a really cool Wonder Woman book. So as I said, I'm really close, really, really close on completing my Wonder Woman run. It's something that's, it's kind of one of those big long-term goals. I've been trying to get little pieces of it since I was a kid. <laughs> I don't know why I always liked Wonder Woman. I always thought that that was the series that was kind of one of the more cooler series. Um, I kind of grew up watching, um, uh, you know, Linda, Linda, is it Linda Blair? Linda Carter. Wow, that was pretty bad. Um, Linda Carter, you know, doing the Wonder Woman, she'd do the little twirl and stuff. And a lot of the Golden Age books remind me of her. The The style is very similar. The, the you know, the, the you know, pantaloons are very similar. You know, the more modern Vampire, uh, Wonder Woman doesn't have that kind of style. It's more like, you know, uh, more like... Uh, Amazon warrior style a bit. So I, I kind of like the golden age look to Wonder Woman because it reminds me of Linda Carter from when I was a kid and watching, watching Wonder Woman on TV. Um, so yeah, so that has been the unboxing. I hope you enjoyed some pretty big keys in this and pretty big books. Um, you know, I, I didn't actually pay that much for that deadline one. This this one, I actually got a really good deal on it. And I was like, it was at auction and nobody bid on it. I got it. And I was like, wow, I just got a steal. I, I think I paid 200 or something, two, 300, which is a steal for that book. It's just such a great price. So that was huge. Um, I was quite excited about it. Um, so yeah, so that's been my unboxing. Thanks for watching. Uh, please leave a comment below. And what kind of books do you like out of the ones that I got or ones that you're picking up. So tell me and I'll be, I'd be interested in hearing. Thanks for watching.